سلام به قسمت نهم از سری دوم برنامه دنیای فرنچایز ها خوش اومدید در ادامه بحثی که دفعه قبل داشتیم یه مقدار راجع به صحبت هایی که فرنچایزی یا فرنچایزی های فستان در ایوارن داشتم میپردازیم و در ادامه هم بخش دیگه ای از صحبت های من رو باهاشون تماشا خواهیم کرد خب در قسمت های در قسمت گذشته پویا و سارا به مباحث مختلفی پرداختن اولین چیزی که بهش اشاره کردن گرد همایی سالیانه فست ساین بود که در شرکت کردن خاطرتون هست هدفمون از این بحث ها و اینکه یه بار دیگه با هم میخوایم مرورش بکنیم این هستش که ببینیم وقتی یه بیزنس فرانچایز میخریم چه چیزهایی رو به دست میاریم که میتونه ارزش این رو داشته باشه که ما پولی رو بهشون پرداخت بکنیم خب این گرد همایی های سالانه که مخصوصا فرانچایز هایی که یه حدی بزرگتر هستن دارن باعث میشه که فرنچایزی های مختلف دور هم دیگه جمع بشن و اینجوری که بچه ها توضیح میدادن تمین کننده های مختلف در این گرده همایی سالیانه میان و برای فرنچایزی ها سیستم هاشون و محصولاتشون رو توضیح میدن بر حال اینا کسانی هستند که در نهایت وقتی میخوان اون محصول نهایی رو اینها تهیه بکنن از ساخته های اونها استفاده میکنن و حتی گفتن که یه گواهی نامه مثلا بهشون دادن خب مثلا خاطرم هستش که پویا یه جایی تعریف میکرد که یکی از این تمین کننده ها که به صلاح تمین کننده خیلی معروفی هست در سطح دنیا اگر رو وبسایتش برین اگر کسی در ناحیه ایرواین بخواد مثلا اون محصول خاص رو بر بخره اصلا تنهایی بخرتش فقط یکی از جاهایی که میتونه برای ازش خریدار کنه مغازه اینها هستش مغازه فستاین هستش که میگفت همین قضیه یک درآمد کوچیکی رو با بدون اینکه هیچ کنه تلاشی براش بکنیم در کنار سایر درآمدها برای ما به وجود آورده که خب بودن در چنین سیستم بزرگی میتونه چنین مزیتی رو برای افراد به همراه بیاره به حال اون کسی که داره برای 600 تا مغازه و 600 محل فروش چنین مذاکره ای رو انجام میده قدرت چونزنی بیشتری داره که خیلی از این موارد رو وقتی که شما یک شعبه مغازه تنها داشته باشی عملا امکان رسیدن بهش رو نداری یکی دیگه از چیزهایی که در این سیستم ها جالب هست و من دوستم راجع بهش صحبت کنم پدیده هست به نام منتورشیپ واقعیتش من کلمه منتور رو معادلش رو پیدا نکردم که ما در فارسی چی میگیم و واقعیتش تو اون مدتی که من ایران بودم خب چنین سیستمی رو ندیدم ولی اینجا من در جاهای مختلف مشاهده کردم سیستمی وجود داره که وقتی یه فردی وارد یه سازمانی میشه من مثلا در توست مستر چنین چیزی رو دیدم یا شنیدم در شرکتی دوستی تعریف میکرد که یه شرکت بزرگ کار میکرد چنین چیزی رو داشتم و خب دیدیم که پویا و سارا هم تو فحصان بهش اشاره کردن شما وارد یه سیستم میشی و یه فرد قدیمی که همون کار رو میکرده از اول یه جوری میشه منتور شما یه کسی میشه که پا به پای شما میاد و به شما کمک میکنه که توی اون سیستم جا بیفتید این باعث میشه که یک آدمی خودش رو مسئول این بدونه که شما رو اونجا همراهی بکنه همه چم و خم سیستم رو به شما آموزش بده و مثلا توی توست مستر که ما میرفتیم از همون اول برای اون سه تا پروژه اول یه کسی وجود داشت که خودش خب قبلا این مسیر رو رفته بود و حالا به شما کمک میکرد که این مسیر رو قبلا بیان که حالا وقتی که ما شدیم به سلا سال بالایی ما هم منتور کسایی میشدیم که حالا جدید وارد اون سیستم میشن که پویا و سارا هم ذکر کردن که در فستاین هم اونها از چنین چیزی استفاده کردن یه کسی که حالا فرانچایزی شعبه دیگه ای بوده از همون اول به صلاح منتورشون شده و پا به پاشون اومده هر وقت سالی داشتن جواب میداده و کمکشون میکرده که به اصطلاح توی این سیستم جا بیفتن نکته دیگه ای که دوست دارم بهش اشاره بکنم کمکی است که بچه ها توی هفته اول گرفته بودن خب اون اول که کسی در مغازه رو باز میکنه مشتریان میان و اینجوری که بچه ها میگفتن بین چند هزار تا محصول مختلف تو میخوای حالا انتخاب بکنی آشنایی نداری و خیلی ممکنه سیستم با هم دیگه هماهنگ نیست قبلا با هم کار نکردن و خیلی مشکلات ممکنه به وجود بیاد که فستاین در این زمان کسی رو در, در همون هفته اول به مغازه بچه ها فرستاده که بهشون کمک بکنه و صحبت میکردن که چقدر این کمک براشون با 
ارزش بوده یا باز هم این یکی از مزایای بودن در یک سیستم فرانچایز یا سیستم با تجربه هستش که چنین کمک هایی رو واقعا آدم میتونه در استرسش باشه و گنه وقتی که شما خودتون مغازه رو باز میکنی و همه چی رو قرار جوابگوش خودت باشی بر حال وقتی که به خصوص اون اول شروع میکنی خیلی کم ممکنه کسی رو در دسترس داشته باشی که این جور سوالا رو بپرسی چون به حال اگه کسی هست و تو اون صنعت وارده یه جوری رقیبت میشه و نمیتونی چنین سوالایی رو با خیال راحت ازش بپرسی نکته دیگه ای که بهش اشاره کردن موقعی بود که راجب این که اکثریت مغازه رو صاحبش به صلاح سارا هستش یعنی اینجوری برنامه ریزی کردن خب نکته خیلی جالبی بود یه چیزی که دوستانی که در امریکا بیزنس دارن باید بدونن این هستش که وقتی که یک بیزنسی صاحب اکثریت سهامش یک خانوم باشه به خصوص وقتی که بخوان از دولت پروژه بگیرن در مناقصه قصه ها شرکت بکنن دارای مزیت خوبی هستن به دلیل اینکه ارگان های دولتی ارگان های محلی اینا موظف هستن که یک قسمت از کارشون رو به گروه های خاصی اختصاص بدن مثل بیزنس هایی که اکثریت سهامش و خانم ها دارن یا بیزنس هایی که یه گروه های اقلیتی صاحب اکثریت سهامش هستن و خب همین مسئله میتونه کمک بکنه به خصوص به بیزنس هایی مثل شعبه فحسان که از کار هایی که ارگان های دولتی دارن اینها هم بتونن کار بگیرن و به سلام من به درآمدی براشون باشه نکته دیگه ای که راجبش صحبت کردن در مورد وامی بود که برای بیزنسشون گرفته بودن که حالا شاید جالب هست بهش اشاره بکنیم که در امریکا وام های مختلفی به افرادی که میخوان یک بیزنس کوچیک رو راه بندازن میدن ارگان های مختلف حالا شرکت های خصوصی مختلف و یکی از اینها که خب از همه کارایش بیشتره و معروف تر هست وام سازمان صنایع سازمان بیزنس های کوچک یا SBA که مخفف Small Business Administration هستش رو میشه در واقع بهش اشاره کرد که حالا این وام SBA loan اینجوری هستش که این سازمان بیزنس های کوچک میاد به نوعی این وام رو گارانتی میکنه یعنی نه اینکه خودش این وام رو میده بلکه این وام رو گارانتی میکنه و به خاطر اون قضیه حالا بانک یا اون سازمان خصوصی قبول میکنه که این وام رو به فرد پرداخت بکنه اینا وام های خیلی خوبیه با بهره های کم بعضا تا 70 درصد بیزنس رو به افراد وام میدن البته خب طرف باید شرایط خاصی داشته باشه از جمله اینکه مثلا یه منبع درآمد دومی داشته باشه یا اینکه مثلا سابقه ورشکستگی نداشته باشه یا مثلا اگه میخوان توی یه رستوران یا چیزی شبیه به اون برای یه چنین بیزنسی وام بگیرن باید حتما تجربه در صنعت رستوران داشته باشه یا چیزهای مختلفی که به هر حال هر زمانی یه کسی میخواد وام بگیره یه متخصص وام باش میشینه این شرایط رو مرور میکنه و در میاره که آیا میتونه از این نوع استفاده بکنه یا خیر موقعی که افراد یه بیزنس مستقل رو راه میندازند خب خیلی وقتا سختتر هست موفقیت اون بیزنس رو حل شانس موفقیتش رو اثبات کردن و خب گرفتن وام های اس بی یه مقداری میشه گفت سختتره اما در مورد فرانچایز ها فرانچایز های زیادی هستن که از قبل حتی اون تاییدیه رو گرفتن و به اصطلاح بهشون میگن پری اپروفد هستن برای یه وام اس بی ای که خب یکی از چیزایی که وقتی یه نفر داره با یه فرانچایز صحبت میکنه و سرمایه گذاری تو اون رو بررسی میکنه میتونه همیشه ازشون بپرسه این هستش که آیا در لیست از قبل تایید شده برای وام اس بی ای هستن یا نه البته خب دقت کنی این چیزایی که داریم راجع به صحبت میکنی مربوط به کسانی هستش که ساکن امریکا هستن حالا گیرین کارت دارن یا سیتیزن هستن و به نوعی اجازه اینو دارن که اینجا از این به صلاح مزایایی که هست استفاده بکنن خب این راجع به بحثایی بود که دفعه گذشته داشتیم با بچه ها ازتون دعوت میکنم که ادامه صحبت های من رو باهاشون ببینید که باز هم نکات آموزنده ای رو میشه از صحبت هاشون یاد گرفت. Let's go to your daily works. Uh, what is exactly um, that you do in this business? But tell us a usual day that you have. So, <laughs> um, you know what's interesting about this is every day it's different. 
uh, every day is a different product. It's a different. Uh, uh, it's a it's such a huge range that that every day is different but generally on a, on a typical day I, I come in the morning my guys come in the morning uh, and we uh, you know we we have a wall that we keep all of our daily orders in so we go through our wall we go we go through our wall through our daily production meeting uh, so in this production meeting we uh, figure out the day flow and what we need to do, then we um, usually have a ton of emails that have come between the time we close and the time we open. So those are usually clients with questions, uh, with uh, waiting for proofs or waiting or, or have received their proofs, approved the job and all that stuff. So we put that entire piece together and and we figure out our day and we figure out what we're gonna do the next day as well so we have it today and tomorrow uh so once we do that then uh you know we have to determine what type of inventory we're gonna need uh so we uh look at what we have we look at what we need we do our ordering uh most of our uh vendors they they deliver on the same day, so it's quick. Uh, we get everything in here and we get we get everything moving. Um, and then throughout the day, while we're here, we're you know we are we are typical. We're answering phone calls. Uh, we're uh, you know we're 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 creating new artwork. We're doing some production, and uh, we're doing a lot of marketing. You know with even with everything even with uh you know with the advertising and all that stuff you still need to call you still need to make a call you know you still <laughs> need to uh find out um you know most people need a sign they just don't know it so you know you call and you say hey you know i'm your local guy and do you need anything so and most people are relatively appreciative um of the fact that we remember to call them and and give us an order or at least you know say call us on this day we're going to be ready for this order that's the day today um it's it's we last week we did a uh, we did a digital sign program for a client um this was something that we had not done since the opening so his was the, the first, first one <laughs> so you know having to so i actually had to go through a vendor training <laughs> <laughs> without to, telling the customer <laughs> no, I, I, we actually we went through it together oh. so the vendor provided a space for them to get on this training as well and they said would you like to sit in on this and I would have you know I, I would love to know about the software that that they use to make these things so I sat on it as well so we went through a training and we put a package together for them and uh, we did their installation um, and you know we got that going so um, that's that's what I mean when I say it's something exciting every day um, this week uh, for a school in Brooklyn New York we are writing an entire sign program um, that's something that that is you know it's it's very detail oriented you know when uh, architectural firms write these things into their budget they usually want a very specific look they usually want a very specific material they usually want something very specific so we're doing that um, another client nearby uh, I you know and I do this on a daily basis I do site surveys so I go out and I take measurements take pictures and see what they want so I actually had a chance to go to a helicopter manufacturer and sit with them and play in a helicopter. <laughs> you know, I was measuring, I was working, you know. So. But, you know, that's that's the aspect of, of the business that's that's exciting, you know. It's uh had I not been at Fast Signs, this client, Hellstream, would have not known about me, you know. Mm -hmm. Um but they googled and they saw that we're, we're a sign company we're a legitimate <laughs> sign company and they uh, called us and came to us so these are you know these are the daily aspect of it so in the morning when i come in um i usually know that i'm going to have my production meeting 
and I usually know that I'm going to have to answer emails, a few emails. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know during the day who is going to call me to come in and do mm -hmm. a survey. I had, um, you know, I had another client where uh, when I went to um, do the installation, the installer asked me if I wanted to get into his uh, bucket truck with him. So I got into his bucket truck, went five stories up, and I was <laughs> hanging from a bucket with a harness, putting letters on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> she just found out about that. <laughs> so, uh, you know. <laughs> so there is, you know, there is, there is a, 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 there's a, there's a degree of excitement that comes with this business. Um, and you know, every day I, I get to experience it. You know, some days I get to experience it from you know ground level. Some days I go up five <laughs> stories high, hanging from a bucket. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, if I wanna summarize the specifications that a successful person needs to have in this business, mm -hmm. uh, help me if I'm wrong. I think that first of all, you need to really be a good communicator to with your customers. You need to have a good impression and make a good relationships with them. Then I think that you need to be able to do kind of a project management so that everything that comes in goes out exactly in time. And other than that, you probably need a salesperson you, or you yourself need to do that part. Is, is it the criteria that I, do you agree with this criteria? Absolutely. I mean, uh, there is, uh, there's obviously there's a lot of project management. Um, and that, that aspect of it is, is essential for us. Um, we get one chance to make a first good fir make a first impression, a good first impression, mm -hmm. right? So we, uh, once we, if we screw up that chance, then that client is going to be turned off and they're not going to be happy. Now, most of our clients around here <laughs> are very understanding, are very nice people. They knew at the beginning that, that we opened up and we may be a little bit slower into getting them the stuff they need. And they keep coming back to us. So, but for, you know, right now that we've been open for about a year and we got everything going, it's become clockwork. Um, every, every time you, you, with every month that passes by, we know more about our business. Mm -hmm. uh, and Fast Signs makes sure that we do. So once a month, uh, twice a month, we get our newsletter um, that tells us about new vendors they've signed up, that tells us about uh, a new product, a new exciting product that has come out, um, they tell us about, uh, you know, they tell us about new training people that they have hired, new certification programs, and that. Uh, once a quarter, they sent us a magazine, uh, the, the, the Quarterly Edge, they call it, I think. And in this, there's also a slew of information. They tell us, uh, you know, which new owners they have added. What is the, uh, you know, what is that owner's background? Are they, you know, did they used to be an architect? Did they used to be, you know, did they used to be in construction? And then they give that person's information. So you get a chance to talk to them and, you know, and work together. Uh, when I first uh, was thinking about this, Charlie put me in touch with an owner in Chicago who sells, uh, who does a lot of this product that is very prevalent for this market. So I talked to the guy and he told me, you know, he gave me his cell phone number. I called him at home and we talked and we talked for a good couple hours and he told me what I need to ask, you know, how I need to qualify. That is invaluable, especially in this business where there's so much competition and the competition doesn't want you to know. So if I call one of my competition and say, well, what do you think? <laughs> you know, they'll most likely not tell me, you know, respectfully decline. <laughs> you know? So, you know, with this, I know that I don't just have fast signs that I can call and I can get information. 
I also have other owners. Um, we have, you know, we have uh, many stores around here and we have a very cordial, friendly, cooperative relationship mm -hmm. with all of them. We have, uh, you know, we're working with a, a client in Los Angeles right now. And the gentleman in Los Angeles who owns the Fast Signs, he's doing all of our installations out there. It's the same thing with him when he called us for his client in South Coast Plaza. We went out and we did the installation for him. Mm -hmm. So we also help each other out in that aspect of it as well. Mm -hmm. So it, all of this, all of this makes having this franchise worthwhile. Also, um, with this franchise, um, you know, you have a business that has a name uh, in a major city, major location in Irvine. Mm -hmm. um, and if, you know, one day I decide that I don't want to work here anymore or I'm tired, I want to retire or whatever, right? This business will be worth a lot of money because I would have a major client list with a major company. And if I choose to sell this business and walk away, then I can put this business in the market with all of these and the name. Whereas if you have an unknown name or if you have, you know, one of the, you know, if you're a small, you know, privately owned business, well, your net worth for your business isn't going to be as high as this. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these private businesses, most of these private sign businesses, uh, they get purchased for parts. They get purchased for the large format printer, for the CNC cutter, for um, you know, for the laminator and, and all that stuff. They don't get purchased so they can be kept around and kept going. Mm -hmm. um, we do the same thing. We're right now we're looking for a business to purchase because we want to buy equipment. We want to buy a large format printer that prints directly to media. Mm -hmm. We want to buy a CNC cut. So, But for your business, it's actually the name of the business that yeah. also has the word and help you to sell it. That's the reason that you actually have to pay more to buy a franchise business compared to an independent business. Yeah, when you get ready to retire, when you get <laughs> ready to, uh, to, you know, to sell and go to a new adventure, then your business is actually worth something. You can, you can sell it, you can, and, and you can walk away from it when the time comes. I have a, a very deep question based on your experience. If someone is a good project manager. I mean, they can handle all of these orders and they can make sure that they all of them goes out in time. And also they have a good relationship with people, but they are not good in sales. Mm -hmm. Do you think that these kind of people can be successful in this business? The, the very nice thing with this business is, is you don't have to be a jack of all trades. Uh, you can do one aspect of your business. You can run your shop. If you choose to run your shop, you can just run your shop or you can hire a manager to run your shop for you. If you're not good at doing sales, then you hire a sales rep. You hire an outside sales rep. They go out and they talk to people and they get properly trained by this company. Uh, you don't need to be, you really don't, um, you really just need to be a good businessman. Mm -hmm. in order to run this, right? Or you business need woman. Or business or <laughs> business woman, yes. Good luck. Um, Don't forget the <laughs> majority of it. Yeah, yes. Sitting here. <laughs> I always say I just work for her. You know, I'm not the owner. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, really a successful business for an entrepreneur is a business that, that you uh, really don't have a, uh, you really don't deal with a day-to-day. Mm -hmm. You're still being an entrepreneur. You're still going out and looking for that next opportunity. You're still going out and looking uh, to expand your horizons. Um, and that's what, that's what we do with this company. I am, uh, my involvement with the day-to-day -day of this business is very little. Um, you know, I've been open for about a year. I don't think a lot of people can say that because when I looked uh, at Subway, when I looked at uh, uh, UPS stores, you're involved in the day-to-day -day all the time. So mm -hmm. with this, 
um, you know, there's a machine here that I have never used here. <laughs> yeah, that's her time. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, um, so for me, uh, or for anybody who's looking to a business similar to this, uh, what you want to do is you want to do what you do. You want to put the right people mm -hmm. in the right place in your store. You're going to pay them a nice salary. You're going to pay them, uh, you know, you're going to give them benefits. You're going to give them all that stuff. So you're going to hire these people. You're going to put them to work and they're going to work for you. And they're going to run your business. When a phone call comes in, the front desk takes it. The front desk takes the information, gives it to the graphic designer. The graphic designer creates the artwork. Mm -hmm. Then the production manager puts it together. Then the installer goes and installs it. The, your cog in here is, is to make sure that this process is smooth, that these people are getting their paychecks, that these people are, um, are doing their job, that these people are paying attention. Your cog in this, if you want it to be, you're doing the marketing. You're making sure that you go to, um, you know, you go to the meetings. You know, you have to be involved with your community. Mm -hmm. And that is an important aspect of any business is that you want to be at network meetings. You want to be at luncheons. You want to yeah, take... Uh, I actually like you to go deep in this particular thing that how much involvement in community can help in your business. It's, it's everything in this business. Um, we are, we're part of the Irvine uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are also belong to BMI groups. We belong to networking groups that, that we meet once a week uh, with uh, Irvine Chamber. It's a very active and involved chamber. So uh, we, uh, <laughs> we meet for lunches and dinners and, and, and different meetings all the time. There's... Uh, there's, there's all, every day I get an email from Irvine Chamber about an event that's going on. That's somewhere. Um, yeah, there, so. Even with our grand opening, we had, um, you know, we had the ribbon cutting. They came in and they put this whole thing together. And, uh, you know, and, and we did it. Uh, we did that aspect of it with them as well. So, so actually you go to these networking events and also, also Chamber of Commerce events to make relationships with people so that whenever they needed something that you have, they can remember you. Is that the way that... That's yeah. true. Yeah. It's a, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. We have worked with Mayor of Irvine. Yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah. Mayor of Lake Forest is a close by city. We have more worked with uh, their offices with them. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that So how could you uh, make that relationship that they come to you? Through the chamber. Through the chamber. You went there in their mixers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they came for the grand opening. We met uh, so many people um, from... Um, um, we local met our congresswoman. Congresswoman, yeah. and then we and we met so many people from California board, and we met the um, those people from the chamber. They helped out a lot with the um, you know open house and the grand opening, mm -hmm. and the scissors is real. <laughs> the big scissors. Yeah, tell the us more scissors. about your grand opening experience and how fast sign helped you in the. Oh process. yeah, actually for our grand opening, everybody came from the uh, Dallas. The Catherine came, and then uh, Mark came, and then um, basically um, they ha helped out with the marketing and invitations. So they have, they have a guy, his name is David. He's a very nice guy. So I talk to him a lot. <laughs> He's very nice. <laughs> the guy on the other side of the phone, I guess. The guy from the other side of the phone. So we work uh, together a lot. And he's very nice and nice. <laughs> I, I have to emphasize on nice. <laughs> so he helped a lot with the invitations, designing the invitations, sending out to my client list and everybody else. Like they sent out like 2,000 in invitations in Irvine and wow. close um, cities. And then um, with the date, I had to make sure that Catherine was available. Catherine is, is CEO of Fast Science mm -hmm. and also Mark Jameson. He's very nice. <laughs> nice and then um so they came over um the marketing guys in um the grand opening they helped out the it guys for the um, website they helped out um mostly chamber 
they very very nice and then they they found out that we are like part of a big franchise more people came over <laughs> so many important people for the example mayor the congresswoman there were like so many people in here really yeah we had um you yeah. had mayor of uh, yeah 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 it was very just nice. by invitation just by invitation so and then um they gave us so many certificates of like you know different kinds nice ones from the california and then from the city of irvine he stopped by he gave us that plaque and saying that um he has signed underneath the mayor of irvine <laughs> wow اجازه بدین این برنامه رو با داستانی از زندگی آقای جک ما که سازنده وبسایت علی بابا هستم به پایان ببرم. ایشون خب بر اساس گفته مجله فورچون در حال حاضر 22 ومی مرد ثروتمند جهانه. اما اون چیزی که داستان زندگیشون تعریف میکنن تجربیاتی بوده مثل سه بار رد شدن در کالج، سی دفعه در مصاحبه شغلی، ده دفعه در دانشگاه هاروارد. میگن وقتی کی اف سی میخواسته بره چین 24 نفر اپلای کردن ایشون تنها کسی بوده که رد شده پلیس میخواسته بره استخدام بشه رد شده و خلاص انواع و اقسام شکست ها رو در مسیرش داشته و اکنون اینجوری که میبینید جز و افراد موفقی هستش که ازش نام میبرن خب درسی که داستان زندگی ایشون میگیرن این هستش که هیچ زمانی شکست ها در زندگی نباید باعث بشه که ما دست از تلاش کردن برداریم شاید وقتی یه شکستی جلو رومون رخ میده به این دلیل هستش که دنیا داره به ما میفهمونه این راهی که داریم تلاش میکنیم واردش بشیم اون راهی نیست که هدف از هدف دنیا از به وجود آوردن ما و قرار دادن ما هستش و هدف ما جای دیگه ای تعریف شده به حال امیدوار هستم که هیچ شکستی در زندگی باعث نشه که دست از تلاش بردارین و همچنان ادامه بدین تا اون نقطه‌ای که باید قرار بگیرین روزها و شبهای بسیار خوبی رو براتون آرزو کنم